Welcome to the Laser Therapy Institute weekly podcast, the world's first podcast about medical laser therapy for healthcare providers. Each week, we discuss the latest research, interviews with experts, and how laser therapy can enhance your practice. Now, here is the founder of LTI and your host, Dr. Jason Roundtree. Hello, and thanks for joining us again this week on the Laser Therapy Institute podcast. My name is Dr. Jason Roundtree. I'll be your host today. We're taking a little bit of a break from our typical um, research studies and interviews to talk a little bit about marketing and specifically marketing to build a laser therapy practice. This is one of the big focuses of Laser Therapy Institute is helping doctors to build a laser therapy practice. So we're going to talk uh, some of the basics of how to market to increase your volume of laser therapy patients. So I'll give you the little bit of an outline here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, being compliant uh, with your governmental agencies that regulate uh, what you can say, what you can't. We're going to talk about how to maximize your return on investment in marketing. And then we're going to talk about how to build your brand, really focusing on establishing your brand in your local area. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, one of our practices here um, where Montana Laser and Medical Center is a laser therapy center. It's the main thing that we do and we're here in Kalispell, Montana. That is a uh, very small town, um, a lot of blue collar, a lot of retirees. Um, and I tell you that to tell you that if you're in a small town, you don't have to worry about your volume of patients. We were able to open this practice uh, with no marketing other than word of mouth and within about two months we had a full schedule of nothing but laser therapy patients. So um, it's very very possible to, especially if you have an existing practice, build a laser therapy clientele, really improve that uh, return on investment for your laser therapy equipment and also for your coaching um, and systems that you want to put in place to really build that income to where it, it does have a payoff for you. Obviously you should only be doing laser therapy um, if you're interested in patient health and that goes of course for everything so that's an, uh, that's an assumed constant here that you're, what you're doing in your practice is to benefit your patients. Obviously though, you've got to keep the lights on. You've got to keep your staff paid. You've got to pay off your equipment. Um, you've, got to, you've got to be able to pay your bills. So we do have to talk about income. But the assumption here is that you are doing this to help your patients. If you come at it from that perspective, then you will do well. I guarantee it. Because no matter what, um, you have to be patient focused. And if you're patient focused with what you're doing, your patients know it and it improves your brand and improves your reputation. We'll talk about that a little bit more here soon. So we were able to open this clinic in a rural area, um, small town kind of area, and rapidly build up to capacity. And at this point now we have uh, about a dozen staff, uh, including three providers and four laser therapy devices that we run continuously all day, every day. We treat about, uh, well, we'll do about 10,000 treatments a year or so. Um, and we've been continuously growing uh, since day one. So even in a smaller area, there's not really a cap or a limit on what you can do as long as you are, for one, getting good results, and then two, managing your marketing. So today we're not talking about getting good results, all right? That's something that we will coach you on what kind of treatment plans to do. We will get you um, guidance on the custom protocols that we've developed for laser therapy to drive certain treatment effects like reduction of inflammation, reduction of scar tissues, uh, managing the inflammatory response body wide. We'll get you that information today really though we're talking about, you know, assuming you're already getting those good results, how do you capitalize on that uh, for laser therapy specifically? So that's where you want to go ahead and, and make sure, of course, that you have good marketing goals set up. What kind of time frame are you talking? And what kind of uh, new patient 
involvement do you want to have? Do you want to get one new patient a month for laser therapy specifically? Do you need to get 20? What is it you're looking for? I will tell you, it is not difficult to get all the way up to 50 new patients a month for laser therapy as long as you're getting good results and you have a reasonable, even fairly low budget marketing plan because laser works great. So your results really do speak for themselves and word of mouth is gonna be huge. If you're already doing laser therapy and you're getting good results, you've seen that yourself. If you're not getting good results with your laser, let us help you get those good results. That's an essential piece of this whole thing working. So set up your goals. How many new patients do you need? And, and in what time frame? So once you've got that down, then you have to decide, okay, to make this compliant, how can I word my advertisements? Now, I'll talk about the U.S. specifically because that's you know, where most of our clients are is in the U.S. Each different country and sometimes even individual states and provinces will have different regulations. If you need help figuring that out, give us a call. We'll get you some help. But overall, we're going to be guided by FDA regulations here in the U.S. And those regulations do state that you can, you can claim a benefit with laser therapy for pain. As long as you stay pain focused, you're safe. All right. Uh, the actual wording for FDA clearance on most laser devices is that it's for the temporary reduction of pain, um, reducing inflammation, and uh, muscle and joint aches. So it's very, very um, non-specific. And so your, your advertising, unfortunately, needs to stay non-specific. You can address pain and you can address painful conditions. So let me give you an example. If you are treating neuropathy in your clinic, it is great to go ahead and say that your, that your treatments, your laser treatments, can help with the pain from neuropathy. However, to stay compliant, you cannot state that you treat neuropathy with laser. You treat the pain, you treat those uh, effects that go along with that. Now many, many disorders that you're going to be able to address and treat with laser therapy have a major pain component. Headaches, neck pain, uh, torn rotator cuff, most of those are going to have pain. So can you um, ethically state that you are treating pain from these disorders? Absolutely. And that's where you have to stay. You have to stay in that window. You will definitely get into trouble if you start advertising that you are curing neuropathy with your laser. You just can't do that here in the States. Now, that is different. That is different from, from country to country. Um, for example, uh, in Canada and the UK, there are regulations that state that you know these devices are cleared for certain conditions. And so your advertising there can be different and needs to be probably different. Again, you need to dig into this a little bit for your particular locale and make sure that you're gonna be using language that is compliant. If you need help with that, again, give us a shout. We'll help get you to the resources that will show you, uh, excuse me, what you can and cannot say. So that's number one. Your number two there is we wanna be maximizing your return on investment because spending money on advertising can be a complete waste. Spending money on a laser is never a waste unless you don't use it. Spending money on coaching or on services like we provide to our clients is never a waste because there's going to be a return on investment as long as you follow those directions. However, if you do advertising and get no interest at all, it is absolutely wasted money. So what do you do to make sure you have good return on investment? Well, for one thing, try not to spend money. You want to use your existing patient base. If you have an existing clinic already, you want to use your existing patient base to educate, inform, and then drive patients to laser therapy. Obviously, the right patients, the patients that need it, but you want to use your existing contacts already to drive that interest. So if you're a chiropractor, you've been doing kind of your traditional uh, manual adjusting and really nothing else, and you add laser therapy to your clinic, it's very easy to take, for instance, an existing patient who's dealt with headaches. Maybe you've gotten them from headaches, um, let's say 10 days a month, and maybe they're down to five days a month. Hey, that's a good improvement. That's a wonderful improvement. But adding in laser, maybe you can get them down to one day of headaches a month. That's absolutely worth it to the patient, 
And that's a, that's a really easy say, hey, look, we've been able to improve it this far. Let's try getting some laser in there and see if we can improve it even more. Most patients are very, very open to that, especially if they've already seen good results with you. So focus on those patients who have been successes, who maybe they're even on maintenance at this point, but could get better. That's a really easy starting point. Let's say you're a physical therapist and you're working on somebody and they're improving with, let's say, working on a, um, a rotator cuff tear. Let's say they're improving, but they keep banging themselves up. They keep doing silly little things and during their daily life and you know that your plan is working, but what could you do to help minimize these micro aggravations and help the patient get better faster? Add in laser. Tell the patient it's gonna help their treatment plan go faster and smoother, and they'll feel better while they're getting laser. That's an easy one, because again, the patient knows that you're helping them. This will help them that much more. So, focus on that existing patient base. Now, if you don't have a patient base, if you're just opening a clinic and you want to be able to provide laser therapy. That is going to be a more complex launch and, and, and we can help you with that, but it's complex enough that you're going to want to have somebody one-on-one -on -one help you build that plan. That's another service that we do offer. So if you're looking into launching a new clinic and you're going to be providing laser in order to have a successful, quick start like we have here in this clinic, you need to have some help putting that together. Get a hold of us, we'll let you, let you know what you can do. Okay, your second kind of uh, uh, source or, or marketing avenue there that you wanna go for is gonna be social media. Now, most people know social media is where it's at right now for marketing dollars being spent. You do get a lot of involvement there. You wanna really, though, focus into the patient that you wanna see. If you are doing well with treating neck pain with laser, focus on getting more neck pain patients. Don't start looking for the people with neuropathy. Now, if you can get great results with that, I mean, and you can, sure, that's fine, but your biggest bang for your buck will be with patients that you know you can work with well and will have good results because that will help expand that word of mouth, that existing patient base that will be able to go out there and sing your praises. Focus on the patient you want. And also, when you're marketing on social media, talk about the patient and what's interesting to them. Don't talk about what's interesting to you. You and I might find it very, very fascinating that laser speeds up the production of ATP within the cells. Absolutely. Guess how many patients care about that? Almost none. I mean, very, very few. So what do you focus on? Focus on what is gonna get that patient's attention and it's themselves. If you are wanting to get that neck pain patient in, talk about how neck pain can limit your days at work, can limit your interaction with family and grandkids and things like that. Patients key into that and go, yeah, that's me, that's me. I, I haven't been able to get to work three days out of this month because my neck has just been killing me. I can't hardly get in the car. Absolutely, yeah, they can't turn, even turn their head to back out of the driveway. Focus on that important factor for the patient, not for you, focus on the patient. That will get you more engagement on social media. And then also do think about still using your newspapers and other printed publications, your local stuff there, because there's a whole segment of the population that absolutely avoids social media like the plague. They won't touch it, they won't pick up a smartphone, they won't have a computer in their house. Absolutely, is that a thing that goes on? You bet it is. Guess what those people like to do? Read the newspaper. They like to read those local weekly publications. Go ahead and put the money into a good advertisement there. You want it on page three, page five, page seven, somewhere where they can see it as soon as they open it, it's right there on that right side, right hand page. Um, Obviously, if it's on the cover, that's fine, but you can put those advertisements in on that page three, five, or seven, and it will be able to get more involvement there uh, from the people who pick up the newspaper, open it up. A small graphic is useful. A small picture or a chart, something to get a little bit of attention, and then a catchy headline that's not sensational, but that will drive interest. And again, that's talking about the patients that you want to get. So talk about the symptoms they go through, 
talk about how big of an impact that is on their life, and then give them a little bit of info, just a little bit, on how you can help reduce that. Don't overpromise. Don't make claims that you cannot really back up. Don't say anything that's not compliant, but give them a little bit of hope that there's something that you can do for them. And once you get them in the door, then you can give them more information on what it is you do. But initially, to get that attention, you have to talk about the patient, not talk about yourself. Okay. The last one here for maximizing your return on investment is linking your marketing campaigns to a more broad effort, a more, a bigger scope. And that's where a link with a uh, organization like Laser Therapy Institute really comes into play. Because nationally, we are known to have effective laser treatment centers. So, if you have somebody in your practice and they're raving about how great your laser treatment is done for them and is there, do you have somebody in X place that can also do laser because my sister lives there. You want to be a part of a network because that drives more interest from elsewhere straight into your door. And if you link to a bigger, uh, more overarching organization, it adds legitimacy to what you're doing. Let's be honest here. Laser therapy sounds far-fetched. It sounds like we're making this stuff up. That's why we focus so much of this podcast on research. Because we want to show that there is legitimate scientific backing to what we're doing. However, for most people, this sounds like Star Wars stuff. Star Trek stuff. Because healing people with lasers? It sounds wild. If you link what you are doing to a bigger organization, it adds legitimacy, it removes a lot of that doubt, and it helps you convert patients from people who are interested to people who are ready to start treatment. Okay, let's talk about building your brand because this is something that's essential to do if you're going to be somewhere for a while. If you're a fly-by-night organization, you're going to you know, park somewhere for a couple of, couple of years and try and just do as much of uh, you can to drive in income, this is not for you. All right, We're talking about somebody who wants to be a part of their community who is there watching their kids grow up, who wants to really be of service to those patients that are in their community. All right, That's what our laser centers are designed to do, is to really be a useful source for local people to get good health care and actually get better. Um, and I'll take just a second and say, you know, we're not talking about these, again, fly-by-night like stem cell clinics that pop up and want to do nothing but sell a whole bunch of patients really fast on big cash plans and then disappear. We're talking about really making a difference and taking care of people and doing what's right for the patient. And that's the brand you want to build. All right? Most all the doctors that I talk to and every Laser Therapy Institute clinic member, that's what they're there to do. If that's not what you want to do, don't focus on building your brand. Now, if you're going to build a good brand, then every patient you see is a brand amb ambassador. I'll say that again. Every patient you see every day is a brand ambassador. Don't even be fooled into thinking that you have to do anything intentional to make that happen. Whether you like it or not, every person you see in your practice today is going to have some impact on your reputation in your area. That's either going to be a negative or a positive. There's no neutrals. It is, you're either building a good brand or you're tearing it down with every patient you see. So your effort into every single patient should remain high. And this is where I see multiple doctors that have a good heart and want to help people. They fall off because they lose sight of the fact that every single person they see is going to have either a negative or a positive experience, and then they're going to spread that. They're going to tell their friends and family about the negative or the positive experience. At some point, they'll say something. And that can either open up a whole line of new patients who want to come into your office, or absolutely shut that down. So you have to focus on that patient that's in the room with you right now, and getting them the best results that are possible to get. That's why LTI programs are important. Because you have this one shot right now. Sure, you've got the patient scheduled for another 20 appointments. They might not be there. You've got right now 
to make a difference in this person's life. And they will be a brand ambassador. They will carry forward and have a positive or a negative influence on your reputation in your community. Every single encounter will do that. So, what do you want to do? Put effort into getting them good results every time and let them know you are doing everything possible to get them those good results. And, obviously, there are always people who don't succeed in treatment. There's always a percentage. Obviously, your goal should be to drive that percentage as low as possible, and that's our goal here in LTI. But, even the 2% or so of failures that we see with our programs, they still come away with a positive impression. They know we worked our hardest, and then we ended up having to refer them somewhere else, but it was because we cared about their well-being that we carried through that, and they still are a positive force for us and our reputation. Keep that in mind. So as you're focusing on each patient being an ambassador, realize that for laser therapy, awareness is key. And when I say awareness, I mean your patients need to know how laser therapy can help not just their condition, but other conditions too. You'd be in, uh, just amazed at how many people have come to us and had great results with their tendonitis in their elbow, say. And then we're about ready to graduate them and let them, let them you know, take off. And they go, hey, do you, think, do you think this laser thing could maybe help with headaches? Well, well, yeah, I mean, you've been coming to us for six weeks. How do, you not, how do you not pick that up? Obviously, that's not the patient's fault. That's our fault for not communicating well enough what laser can do. We need to be able to communicate confidently what laser therapy can help, even if this particular patient isn't dealing with it. There needs to be some education that takes place to help drive the awareness of what laser can be used for successfully so that that patient then feels good about referring others to you. So what are our takeaways? Well, number one, you gotta stay compliant. If you're not sure exactly how to do that, send us an email, we'll let you know what resources you can use to stay in that compliance bubble. Number two, spend your money carefully and deliberately so that you are building your brand but getting good return on investment. Number three is your mindset. Have the mindset that every patient you see, everyone you talk to, is going to be an ambassador for your brand. You want them to be an ambassador for good. Put in the effort. Be present in the room with that patient. Give it your all and make sure they know that you're working hard for them. And number four, link your efforts, link your overall practice, if you can, to a bigger, more broad, organization like Laser Therapy Institute because it removes some of the doubt that patients automatically have coming into something new like this and it helps you to move a patient from a prospect who's interested to a treating patient who's getting better, is happy with the results, and is talking about you in the community and helping to drive more patients in your door. Thanks. Have a great week in practice. Subscribe now to keep learning about the growing field of laser therapy. Check out our patient-focused podcast, Healing at the Speed of Light, a great resource for your patients. For massive practice growth and improved patient outcomes, become a certified Laser Therapy Institute clinic. Learn how at lasertherapyinstitute.org.